Yeah. Sir from 17 once again. Introducing you to Mind Darksiders 2. Apocalyptic difficulty video walkthrough. This is the drenched fort, and uh, I make a mistake at the start of this video, and I'm doing it right now. Do you see these bugs? They will follow you to the end of the earth. These are like those fucking animals in Homeward Bound. Like, these people get rid of their dogs, and they still find them in their new house. It's insane. The only difference is that's a Disney film, so they're all happy to see them, instead of in reality, where you just call the pound and get them injected. But these bugs will not stop following you unless you deal with them. And I thought I could outrun the aggro range because I'm used to Dark Souls logic. And this game does not play by that logic because it's a, an inferior game. But best way to kill these bugs, you can tap B even though the detection on it is completely atrocious. I don't know what they were thinking with the detection. There's a nice stellar example of the fantastic platforming in Darksiders because I held up and pressed jump. And uh, <clears throat> that one's my own fault. <laughs> but the best way to deal with the bugs is to shoot them. Uh, your gun does have limited ammo in its clip, but it is unlimited in its amount. And uh, occasionally you have to set off the bomb flowers with your gun, so just if it doesn't blow up by itself, it means that you have to shoot it. But you'll notice these, fla these flies are still attacking me, and they can kill me because I have very low life, so I just decide to, to shoot some dudes, and I notice that there's an enemy sneaking up on me there, which is one of the stalker tiny dudes like the creeper things. Don't know, I was disappointed with the enemies in this game, if I'm honest. And I'm always honest, because that's kind of the point in me making commentary on this video. Because I could just sit here and lie to you folks, but nobody benefits from that. But this is a mechanic you're going to be seeing a lot in this game, because the developers, I don't know if it was for lack of originality or because they were really attached to the puzzle schemes that they, they, they thought up of the game, but you, you push a lot of those glowing balls and uh, get used to it. But here is the tried and tested, I think it's a Zelda camera, I'm not too sure what game did it first, but I'm, I'm sure people will Google and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, where the camera shows you where you're supposed to go, it gives you a, a nice little interesting nod and wink towards where your intended direction is. But this is an adventure game, and you would be shooting yourself in the foot if you didn't run around and have a look and find goodies and things, because there's Vulgrim tokens, there's, there's hidden chests with loot, there's, there's a lot of good stuff in the game. And uh, I really should get back recording this because I haven't finished the recording yet, but at the speed I'm going, I reckon I can beat this game in about 5 hours. And considering it took me 20 hours the first time, and I was really fucking dallying about. But there, there was two puzzles that got me stuck for ages, because my, either my brain wasn't working, or I just had one of those full-on retard moments. And one of them is in Lost Light, when you're using the, the portal gun, and uh, you have to keep rotating these, these areas to bounce it about, to bounce this light source. And the puzzle made sense in my brain, but every time I tried to do it, I kept messing it up because what happened is, is if, you, if you did a certain thing to fuck this up, uh, you had to go back and like twist the first lever before you could carry on you know, re-evaluating the puzzle, so it took longer than it should have took. And then the other one was when you have the ghosts that you can tell them to go and stand on switches before you can split Death's body. And one of those just... I'd been playing the game all day and I was tired and... Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees because you're staring so hard, and you've been staring so hard at the game for so long. So I just my brain had, had burnt out on you know dark side as juice, and I just couldn't get it flowing again. So I decided to stop playing, and I never went back, which is hilarious because Dark Souls came out for PC, and um, then when I did go back, which is a contradiction to my last statement, <laughs> uh, I beat it in about an hour because I wasn't that far away from the end. But. Here's yeah, some of the mild platforming. This is the first door you're supposed to go towards. Uh, I will try and give you the most concise path through these dungeons, but there is a level of, you know, human error that goes into these guides, so occasionally I will get lost, I will get sidetracked, and uh, I think I should be able to spot it if I'm not going the right way, and I will be able to inform you that you don't have to follow me verbatim to, to get where you need to go. But these are long videos, and if I'm completely honest, there's not a lot of strategy to talk because the game is exceptionally simple. It's, it's very easy. Uh, the only times when it gets hard is when you bump into enemies that are higher than you and your equipment is showing its age. They're the only times you're going to have a tough time. So I'm going to talk about some other stuff because I've been riffing in a previous commentary that I did before this, which was a Call of Duty one. 
about some of the, the politics of YouTube because it's a topic that comes up a lot. It's a topic that only YouTubers generally like to listen to, but because I don't have that many YouTuber friends, uh, well, I say YouTuber friends, I mean people that actually partake in YouTube, not my subscribers, because uh, anybody who comments regularly on my video, I consider you a friend, because not only do you support me, but the majority of you are, are really, really cool and really interesting people, and I respect your opinions, even if sometimes I come across harsh, or maybe in, in, in the words, it, there's no context to see that I'm joking and you don't get the joke. Uh, it's all lighthearted, folks, and you all seem like decent people. But I don't have any big YouTubers or YouTubers in general as friends because my circle of, of buddies uh, kind of thought I wouldn't last a, a week in YouTube because they didn't really see the point. It's one of those things where you know you know when you, you're young and you're at school and one of your buddy says he's going to become a goth because he's he likes heavier music and I say heavier music I'm clearly talking about Limp Bizkit and, and corn and shit but that stuff is really really heavy when you when you come from a pop background so He's, you know, he's, he's finally outing the fact that he likes different music to his friends and because he's young and impressionable he thinks he has to dress a certain way to appreciate a certain type of music so this obviously means he has to go golf and uh, he tells his friends and his friends are like oh well this will only last a week and lo and behold they see him then the next day he's got a dog collar on he's dyed his hair black and he started wearing eyeliner and then he's got a Nickelback shirt on and you're sat there just going yeah you represent that heavy music but the week then follows and he's back to normal because he got picked on so fucking much he didn't have the balls to continue with it. But that's kind of what it makes me think of. But we're coming up on two years in December, so, you know, I've lasted longer than a lot of people thought. Uh, this little sub-boss, by the way, uh, if you wait for him to charge and you dodge at the last possible moment, then you get a couple of strikes in with your heavy weapon. As soon as he goes to bounce into the air, get away. It's an area of effect, and if he hits you with it, he does a lot of damage on Apocalyptic. I'm shooting my gun to both build Wrath and deal scratch damage, and uh, that was a fail right there. <laughs> but he really reminds me of the, the bosses or the enemy from Darksiders 1, because there's something exceptionally similar to that. It's just been so long since I played that game that I'm, I'm not familiar with the names. But the YouTuber discussions and the, the stuff that happens on YouTube, it's its such an interesting place when you analyse it or when you look at it from uh, an observer's perspective, which is, I think, why so many people enjoy it, because it is so complicated and it does have so much depth. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's a superficial, completely cosmetic, fake, plastic bullshit section to it, which is, you know... There is a lot of people that watch it for that, there is a lot of that on YouTube, but there is also much, much deeper things. And I think it's that dichotomy that makes it work. But you're also going to see uh, some of the, the tropes of YouTube, and in this context a trope is basically things or habits that people who are extremely popular on YouTube pretty much do on a whim or because they think it'll be fun or it has something to do with you know their persona or their perspective on how YouTube works and people take notice uh, especially big YouTubers you know like the people that are, are really really looking at this like a business they notice this they, they utilize it and they adjust it into their own like portfolio and essentially it's kind of like you know corporate espionage uh, not so much you know in the, the the really scary, oh, they're gonna get you type deal of, you know, spies and shit and trying to find f fake documents and diaries and dossiers and, you know, French cigarettes, nothing like that, but it is looking at your competition, adjusting what's giving them success and applying it to your own, so it's, it's good business acumen, if anything, but at the same time, I sit and I watch and I just think, this is bullshit. And it makes me laugh, and it makes me laugh because I, I see it, and not a lot of the people that are probably subscribed to these folks, or the people that don't look at things as, as deeply as others do, probably don't. And all I see is the numbers, I just see the, the sacrifices these people make to make themselves as appealing as possible, and logically, and you know, from a professional standpoint, that is exactly what you're supposed to do. If you want success in life, folks, that is the picture-perfect recipe for getting jobs, for getting work, for getting and giving out a good persona. If you go to a job and they tell you what your, or a job interview, sorry, and they tell you what your tasks are going to involve, and the first thing that comes out of your mouth is, oh, I don't like doing that, good luck, 
good luck in life because you're going to be flipping burgers before you can even fart it's it's like that is not how it works but if you can go into any scenario be it you know throwing pig shit at your family and go yeah i'll do that that's fine let's do it bring it on then you're going to go really far because a lot of the times they don't even want qualifications in life all they want is a will to work that is it and i'm going to continue this in the next video because i'm out of time so thanks for watching and you take care now